Good morning, everyone. My name is Zach Hirschfeld with Prodigy Finance. Hope you're having a wonderful day uh, so far. Uh, we're here at the uh, New York City headquarters of uh, Prodigy Finance, as you can see behind me. Um, we also have an amazing guest here, uh, Madhu from USC, uh, doing her MS in Computer Science uh, down in Southern California. Um, it's going to be a great session today. Um, we have a lot of great attendees, really uh, great interest. Um, we still have some students coming in. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, give them a couple more minutes for them to file in, and then we'll, uh, we'll get started. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, and hold on tight, and we'll be with you shortly. Thanks. All right. Well, it's about that time where I think we'll uh, we'll get started. Um, if you've just joined us, thank you so much for for coming to today's webinar. Uh, once again, my name is Zach Hirschfeld with Prodigy Finance. I work in our business development team out of our New York City headquarters, which you, which you can see just behind me. Um, we've got uh, a great group here uh, today. Um, we have uh, Nikhil. Uh, Lasrado, who joins us from our team in India. Um, he's actually joining uh, on the line, uh, visiting our Cape Town office uh, today. And we also have Madhu uh, from uh, USC, from University of Southern California. Um, she's currently doing her, her MS in computer science. Um, so this is really exciting. It will be a great opportunity um, for all of you to learn more about who is Prodigy Finance, uh, how to best take advantage of our service, uh, learn more about Madhu and her journey um, and her experience with Prodigy Finance and at USC doing her MS in the US. Um, so very exciting. Um, I do want to um, ask a couple of uh, uh, questions uh, just so we get a little bit better understanding of who you are um, in your, uh, as a student uh, in your journey. So if you could just take a moment and uh, complete this poll here. We want to let you, we want to ask you at what stage are you in the student life cycle? So are you just preparing for your tests? Are you really early on? Um, maybe you've just got your scores and you're just trying to narrow down which schools you're going to apply to, or have you applied to schools and you're just eagerly waiting for those admins? Or hey, maybe you're you're lucky and already have an admin, which would which would be great. Um, so Thank you so much for the people who have already voted. Uh, let's see if we can get a little bit extra, uh, more people voting. Um, I see most people have. 
Um, it will really, really help us in terms of understanding how to tailor this presentation uh, to the best um, of your needs. All right, let's see if we can get a couple more people. Great, almost there. Couple more. What do you say? There we go. All right, so it looks like the vast majority of people um, have applied to schools, and now we're just waiting uh, for your admits to come in. We do have a couple people who have an admit, so congratulations. Let's have a round of applause for them. Really exciting. Um, very, um, we're, we're looking forward to, uh, to, to see where you'll uh, end up. This is exciting. Um, I do also want to launch uh, this poll question, uh, which is more specifically around why you're attending today's webinar. So are you specifically planning to attend USC? Are you planning to study your MS in the US? Maybe considering USC, but you're not sure. Maybe you're uh, not considering USC at all. Or hey, maybe you want to choose the last option and uh, you, you need some help. Maybe you're, you're lost. You're trying to figure out uh, why, why did you end up in this webinar? Uh, hopefully, we won't have many people uh, answering that question. But if we do, we'll, uh, we'll figure something out. All right. Let's see here. Let's get a couple more people voting. There we go. Almost there. Perfect. So it looks like uh, the vast majority of you are planning to study your MS in the US, uh, considering USC, but not necessarily. We do have about uh, more than a quarter of our attendees, uh, Manu, are planning to attend USC. So this is actually quite exciting. Um, I'm sure you can give them a great sort of pulse about what life is like on campus and, and, and how, to, how to navigate that whole experience. All right, we've got uh, a couple more, and this is this will really help us frame uh, once again the uh, the webinar to the best of your needs. So, have you started an application with Prodigy Finance yet? Maybe you just heard of us and, and have not registered on our website. Uh, maybe you uh, are uh, are very well versed and actually already have a provisional offer. So please just let us know. Um, that'll really help us. Uh, tailor this better. All right. Great. So it actually looks like a really nice uh, mix. It looks like some people haven't registered yet, uh, but some people, but but it looks like the majority of you actually have um, have at least registered, which is great. Um, so good to know that you're you're well versed um, of. Uh, of what uh, property finance is. And then the last question here um, that I'll ask before we get started is, have you heard of property finance before attending this webinar? Please let us know uh, because this helps us, you know, figure out what detail we, we need to go into um, and, then, uh, and then keep you as well informed as possible. All right. Great. So it looks like a good mix here. Um, it looks like we have people in every bucket. We have people that know about us, people who don't, and people that, yeah, sure, I've, I've heard the name, maybe I've had a friend use us, use Prodigy Finance, but uh, not sure um, all, everything about it. So this is a great opportunity for everyone uh, to learn more uh, about Prodigy Finance. So why don't we get into the, uh, the presentation. I will uh, if I can work the slides here one second. One moment. All right. So once again, uh, this is uh, it's going to be a webinar that 
um, goes through a couple different things. And this is a, um, a slide where you can get an idea of what you'll learn overall um, about uh, Prodigy Finance and, and about our, our guests. So first off, we will um, go through a quick overview of who is Prodigy Finance, what we're about. Um, you can then uh, we'll be able to meet our guests. I'll have a brief conversation uh, with Manu to get to many of your questions. I know some of you have submitted questions uh, before uh, the webinar, which is great. Thank you so much. Um, and then we will um, go into a little bit about the application process and then uh, some general Q&A. Um, about this general Q&A, um, if you haven't seen it yet, there is a questions box in the GoToWebinar control panel. You should be able to see that um, as an attendee. Please utilize this questions box throughout the presentation because what we'll do is over the course of the presentation, you can submit your questions and then at the end, during this general Q&A session, we'll be able to answer all of these uh, together. So uh, please, please use this. I do see some students have already uh, utilized this questions box. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll be sure uh, to get to all of your questions. But please don't be shy. Um, ask anything and anything of, of either me, Nikhil, or our guest, Mandu. Thank you. All right. So let's start off. Everyone loves a pop quiz, right? I think this is a perfect opportunity to see, to test your knowledge about Prodigy Finance. I know some people have heard of us, some people haven't, uh, but let's see uh, what uh, you can come up with. So true or false, I can get a loan offer with Prodigy Finance before getting an advent. Let's see how many of you uh, say true or say false. Let's see, let's get a couple more people uh, submitting their answers and then I'll, I'll be able to share the results with you. All right, come on, I see them coming in. Let's get them in quickly. Come on, don't be shy. Couple more people, there we go. All right. Let's see, and the survey said 71 of you, 71% of you said true, I can apply at any time, and that is correct. You can apply at any time with Prodigy Finance, um, whether you have an admin or not. Uh, we can go into it a little bit later, uh, but in terms of this process, you can actually get your provisional offer, so to see what you qualify for at a particular school. Um, you actually won't be able to move towards what we call loan approved, which is past our verification process, uh, until you have an admin, uh, what we call proof of admission. However, you can still get your provisional offer to know what you qualify for before receiving that admin. So that's a really nice uh, feature uh, for, for you to know. Um, and let's do one more quickly. True or false? I must have either a cosigner, guarantor, or collateral to get funding from Prodigy Finance. Let me know. Is that true or false? All right. All right, you guys are quick this time. Let's get a couple more, and then we'll close it and share, share the results. Who else wants to vote? Awesome. Thank you. And the survey says 77% of you were correct. It's false. Prodigy Finance only considers your creditworthiness. We do not accept or actually, we, we do not accept or ask for any cosigner, guarantor, or collateral. The reason for this is that we understand the stress and the burden that you put on your family or anyone else that you ask uh, to be a cosigner or guarantor, which is why we only ask for your information. Um, it's really important um, as, a, as a program that was started by international students that is specifically tailored for international students, we know that this is a big issue, so that's why we never accept or ask you for any of those things. Um, so congratulations uh, to those students who, who got that initially right. Uh, let's go into uh, the rest of the presentation, and, and thank you for joining that, uh, that quick pop quiz session. So who is Prodigy Finance? So Prodigy Finance 
is a pioneer in this space. And what is this space? It's fintech for international lending. So fintech, if you're not familiar with it, it's financial technology. Essentially what we do is we take a, a pretty standard practice, which is lending, and apply technical uh, expertise to, uh, to that uh, standard practice. So in terms of international lending, what we do is we have, uh, we have a fully online platform that utilizes uh, advanced algorithms to predict what you will, what you will be able to afford in a loan in the, over the future after your program. Um, so that's why we have this application process in place um, for you to be able to tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, what you've been doing, what's your background, um, what school you're going to, uh, to be attending. And from that, we're able to discern what is your true affordability. And then we extend you a loan offer uh, based on this. This helps us make really informed data-driven decisions um, and allows us to get very low cost of capital, which is, when we, is, is how we pass along to you uh, high loan amounts and low interest rates. Uh, without collateral, that co-signer, um, all of that stuff. Uh, so in terms of, of being a leader, um, we've been doing this uh, for, uh, for a number of years, since 2007, um, and we started with only MBAs. Uh, but now, as we still are our pioneer in the space, we've expanded to the top 100 engineering schools by US News and World Report. Um, if you're familiar, if you follow us on social media or WhatsApp groups or anything like that, uh, I'm sure you've, you've found this out, um, whether or through word of mouth, that, that we now fund uh, many of these programs. It's really, really exciting, um, and we can't wait to uh, be funding more and more students um, over the next uh, many years. In terms of property finance uh, as a company, um, we are a truly global company. As I referenced earlier, we are a, we are a uh, program that is started that, sorry. By, sorry sorry this is Nikhil. sorry to interrupt but uh, can you just move the slides forward can everyone see this slide we see sorry. only the pop quiz sorry which one the pop quiz slide the orange one only that's oh. showing up right now ah interesting yeah, now we can see the slides. Can you see the slide now? Mm -hmm. Great, yes, on the tank black. How about now? It's blank. Can you see the slide? Uh, it's a blank screen. I'm not sure if it is not refreshing for me or... Let's see. I see it now, though. All right, let me just double check this here. Sorry, everyone, for the technical difficulties. One second. All right. Uh, are these slides working now? Yeah, I can see the slides. Okay, great. Let's uh, let's use this from now on. Okay. Um, so this is just what I was going to, into earlier in terms of uh, who we are. Um, and in terms of uh, Project Finance being a global company, um, as I referenced earlier, we are a program and a company that was built by international students. So actually our CEO, uh, who was the founder of the company, his name is Cameron Stevens, he uh, was an international MBA at uh, a, a program called INSEAD uh, in France. And uh, he started this business because he knew uh, the hurdles and the stresses upon international students. And that's why he really wanted to create a solution um, that was available for everyone. Um, so flash forward till today, um, we are funding uh, thousands of students. We'll be uh, funding 10,000 students. We'll hit our 10,000 mark uh, this year um, in terms of students. We've uh, given out more than $400 million of loans uh, to students from across the entire uh, in, in, across the entire globe. Um, so over 127 different nationalities, um, and we've really uh, grown um, as a company as well. We now have over 120 full-time employees, 
Um, I work out of our New York office. Uh, Nikhil uh, works in uh, India, and he's actually visiting our Cape Town office uh, this week. Um, and then we also are, have our main headquarters in London. So we're a truly global company. We know what it means to be international students. Um, and this is all we focus on. This is our bread and butter product. Um, we only focus on international student financing. Um, and that's why we are the premier solution um, for all international students. All right, so uh, let's get into, uh, why don't we get into meeting our guest, but first, Another quick pop quiz. You guys are going to be tired of me by the end of this. Uh, here is uh, one more pop quiz, I promise. Just, just one more. Project finance loans are dispersed directly to the university on my behalf. What do you guys think? Is it true? Do pro does Project Finance pay the school directly uh, for you? Or is this statement false? Do you receive the loan and then you, the student, pays the university directly? Let's see what you think. All right, let's see if we can get uh, a couple more students to vote. There we go. A couple more, what do you say? All right, perfect. Thank you. Let's see what you guys come up, came up with. 85% said true, Project Finance pays the school for me. That is correct. Project Finance takes care of the entire disbursement process for you, which is actually one of the best perks uh, that Project Finance offers is that we take care of uh, exchange rates, we take care of all that. Because we're dispersing in USD, you won't have to deal with any currency conversion, any disbursements on your behalf. We take uh, all the stress away um, from that process. All right, so I promise that was a lot of pop quiz. Um, let's get into uh, why you're here, which is uh, to hear from a student uh, going to USC, uh, Madhu, uh, welcome. You can uh, you can see her on the video screen here. Um, she, she's reporting live from uh, from the USC library, um, and uh, <laughs> she'll be able to answer so many of your questions. Um, so, hi, Madhu. How are you? I'm good, Zach. It's a bright morning. You can see the sun has begun to rise. <laughs> I can't really know it's dark. <laughs> well, I, everyone, please uh, join me in thanking Madhu for, for waking up so, so early on the trend. She's on the west coast um, of the U.S., so that's actually, uh, it, it's actually 6.55 a.m. right now. I have a little bit easier. I'm in New York, so it's 9.55, uh, but uh, thank you so much, Manu. At least you don't have to deal with the snow, which is what we're dealing with here uh, in, in New York. Oh, it's my pleasure waking up for Prodigy. I mean, it's been great working with you guys, so I really enjoy it. <laughs> it's really fine. Um, okay, all right, everybody. Um, I'm Madhu Dhuri. I'm doing my master's in computer science with USC, and I did my bachelor's in computer science from Bangalore, India. And I also worked uh, for Sony India Software Center, again in Bangalore, as a software engineer. And then I joined USC here, and it's been a really great experience so far. Um, and so many of you might think, why I choose USC? It's because of the amazing location that we have here, and uh, the campus is beautiful, and as all of you might know, whoever has either um, applied for USC or is waiting for the admit from USC, that you probably did because it has a great ranking, especially in the computer science department. So that gives you a great brand value. And yeah, and also I'm part of a few other clubs like Athena Hacks, Bridges, and um, all the Indians. We have this uh, association of Indian students, which is a great support system for everybody here. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, if you have any questions, either regarding my experience with Prodigy, which has been a very pleasant one, I would say, without any reservation, and yeah, about USC, just shoot me questions. Perfect. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, as she mentioned, please utilize the questions box. Um, we, you can either ask might do a question directly or ask it for me or Nikhil about the project finance process. 
Um, whatever it is, please ask away. I see a lot of you have already started, um, which is wonderful. Um, Madhu, I wanted to ask you a specific question around uh, more, starting more general, which is um, what were the reasons that you decided uh, that you wanted to do your MS in the U.S.? What what kind of what was your journey that kind of led you to that decision? And then how did that uh, how have you been uh, enjoying that experience so far? So um, I would say that it's it's a whole experience when I say the working um, studying abroad. It's not just about what courses you take or what job you get, but it's the experience. You see uh, people from various different cultures and, uh, oh, I just lost the video, okay, sorry. Um, you see people from uh, different cultures. So it's a whole new environment when you sit with people with different um, ideas and, and uh, fresh new thoughts about how to approach things. So that's one thing. And that, that's just the classroom uh, perspective. But then also uh, you have all these clubs like just fun fact, we have a Chinese folk dance club or uh, we have a Turkish club, which, you know, uh, experiments with food and stuff. So you you would never get tired. You have so many new things to explore. So that's one thing. And then it's the different style of education. So I come from India where um, I have experienced that uh, there will be the examination system or the projects or the assignments. It's very different. So the exams, you don't need to memorize anything at all, which could be the case with some of the universities in India. So the exams here, the questions really get you thinking rather than just, you know, sh shake your memory maybe to get the answer. And also, it's a lot about personal development. When you come outside your country, you are more independent, you're more strong. You see many intelligent, beautiful people around you doing many things who are of your age or even younger to you. And you feel very motivated to be surrounded by all nice people. So it's all these reasons. Absolutely. Uh, and in, in terms of uh, that, that experience, would, would you say there's been um, any particular challenge for you as as kind of going outside of your comfort zone, being in a new place, like you said, that personal development. Um, what what's that whole experience been like for you? So I like being in new places. So uh, coming here, that that wasn't a problem, and probably going around places that's fun too. But what is challenging is the examination system here. That's one thing, and probably the job hunt. So the examination system, like I mentioned, it's uh, very different uh, from what it is for many universities in India, where uh, you need, in many exams, you probably need to remember maybe some theorems or maybe some proofs. But here, you don't have to do that. Rather, if you've learned a theorem, you need to know how to apply it. And you would never get a question that you have already seen before. It's usually something that gets you thinking uh, those one hour or two hours that you have in the exam. So that's something new if you're not used to and you might need to uh, make your brain practice a little. So, um, but yeah, don't don't be too afraid. Uh, maybe one or two exams and then you'll be on the track. So that's one thing. And then uh, the job hunt, like I mentioned. So in some of the universities, um, in India where I was, it was like uh, the companies would come to the school and uh, put a GPA or something as a cutoff and uh, we write an exam, and, which is like an entrance exam or something, and then people are shortlisted. But here you need to kind of um, sell yourself. So it's challenging where uh, you're from a different country, so you want to blend in. At the same time, you want to kind of stand out so that people notice you. So it's tricky where you want to blend in as well as stand out and make your position and show yourself to the companies and 
tell them why you have why they have to hire you so the system here is you have to go and talk to the company yourself you're not assured that you get a call from the company even for writing a test so that is something so you should be uh, capable of kind of showing off a little of what you've done uh, so that people want to call you. So that's a bit of culture difference that I thought uh, was a little shocking in the first semester. Definitely. And, and that's a very interesting point. Could you talk a little bit more about that recruitment process? Like what companies you've specifically recruited with? Have you had to travel for those? Or have those all been on campus? I know you mentioned that uh, job fairs can be a really important component. So maybe talk a little bit about that experience. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we have career fairs every semester for one or two days. Uh, one day it's usually for uh, generally for everybody at USC. So that includes companies that are coming from marketing, chemical, um, and computers, electronics, everything. And then there's one day, which is a Witterby focused career fair, where we have companies only coming to hire the Witterby students. Um, this is the career fair, which gets probably very, very crowded because there are a bunch of companies that come in and then everybody comes on the same day and there could be long queues because, of course, USC has a lot of people. Um, so one thing I would say for career fairs is uh, you should have your priorities set. Uh, you definitely cannot into, uh, try to talk to the HR of every other company or try to get an uh, interview from every other company. Rather, what you have to do is maybe make a list of maximum three to five companies that you want to go and talk to. And um, usually the companies are placed in alphabetical order, so make sure you know where which you have stalls, so you know uh, where the stall for a company is placed. Uh, do your homework in advance before you go to the career fair. Read about the company, read about the openings they have. You don't want to stand there and say, uh, hey, what are the openings you guys have? Because the company wants to know that you have done some homework on them. Uh, so yeah, do that. Make your priorities. Do some homework on the company. And then go stand in the lines, wear a smile, and talk to the recruiters that's how you should be doing it also uh if you are a little nervous i would suggest that maybe uh if you have three companies in mind go to the company least priority to you first so that you get an experience and get rid of the nervousness and then go to the your dream companies to talk to them and that would be the career fair and uh we have a lot of info sessions uh, at usc you could uh go and learn about the company over there. And if you have any questions with respect to, okay, will you be placing me in a team of your choice or do I get to choose, stuff like that, you could always um, ask the recruiters who come for info sessions because info sessions are a smaller group of people and you get more time to talk to them. And then there is uh, Connect SC, which is USC's own um, recruiting portal, something like uh, Indeed, which is also, again, um, another non-USC portal. So here you usually get uh, job advertisements and you can just upload your resumes and apply through USC. Um, that's about your applying, uh, then about the interviewing process. So some companies, uh, when they do get the technical people on board uh, during the career fair, they like to ask a few technical questions on the fly itself and then probably uh, shortlist you for the next rounds. Um, some of them uh, might just collect all the resumes and give you calls afterwards. So that's how it works. It differs company to company. You could always uh, find out how they do about the process uh, in the info sessions. That's the best place to talk to recruiters. That's great. Wow, that's a really great tip. Thank you so much. I'm sure that's really helpful for, for everyone uh, joining us. Um, real quick, just in terms of uh, housekeeping for everyone, um, we uh, have a few more questions to go and then we'll go into your actual Q&A. Um, once again, use the questions box in your uh, GoToWebinar control panel. Through that, you'll be able to submit questions and then we'll be able to go through all of those um, at the end of the presentation. So uh, thank you for everyone who submitted your questions and thank you for your patience. We'll get to them uh, as soon as we can. 
Um, so buddy, I want to kind of back up to uh, before you actually came to campus. Um, I know a lot of students have asked about this and I know from just experience, um, uh, a lot of students find this process stressful, which is actually the visa application interview uh, and process. Could you talk a little bit about uh, how that was for you and, and maybe any tips or, or, or way, uh, anything to think about for these students? I, I know many of them will be starting in fall uh, 2018, so they'll be getting their visa interviews quite soon. Um, could, do you have any tips for them? Right. Uh, so the first thing you should keep in mind, apply early. Uh, don't wait till the last minute, first of all, because this is the seasons, the student season. So there'll be a lot of people applying and you don't want to end up not getting a date or getting a date which is not convenient for you or getting a time that is not convenient for you. So make sure you book your date well in advance. Um, probably as soon as um, you start getting admits, um, you could start doing that. And um, during uh, for the interview, make sure that you carry all your documents, even the ones which say are not compulsory, like um, a financial document is actually not a mandatory document as per the visa. But it's always good to have, um, especially if you are coming to USA. I understand it's a little expensive side, so the interviewer would be uh, wanting to know how you plan to finance yourself. Okay, this goes without saying in for other universities too. So carry your um, financial uh, document, in that case, uh, prodigies, uh, provisional letter may be uh, very advantageous. And also you should um, take all other documents that you uh, used for applying for the visa. Uh, just keep them all handy and um, Though I didn't get asked, but uh, a few of my friends were asked about uh, why did they choose a particular university or uh, what did they plan to do after their master's. So have your answers ready. Uh, maybe you can uh, jot down all the questions and rehearse them once before you go to the interview so that you don't end up fumbling or looking like you're not sure what you want to do with your life for the next two years. Just that. Just be confident, and um, usually, if it is uh, any good universities like USC, which have a reputation, uh, the interviewers are not really suspicious, so that should be fine. Yeah, just be confident. It should be good. <laughs> thank, thank you for that. And in, in terms of using uh, project finance as as a as a lender for this experience, um, I, I wanted you, you to kind of give your your first sort of initial uh, thoughts about project finance when you first thought about us, and then when you actually got into our application process through disbursement, kind of how did your, what was your first opinion about project finance? I know because everything is so online, some students might be a little skeptical. Um, what, what's your, your overall experience been like? Uh, so I got to know about Prodigy through a WhatsApp group that we were using uh, to communicate about the processes in USC application admits and stuff. So there was uh, one girl who mentioned about uh, Prodigy. So I got curious uh, as I was looking for finances. Um, I didn't want to depend on my parents. Uh, it kind of feels bad to, uh, I mean, it's not bad, but then it kind of feels more independent to have it on your own. And I was really looking uh, for opportunities where I can uh, get some financing. And most of the banks in India expect a collateral. And um, I, I don't have any property or something in my name, obviously. Uh, so Prodigy is something that is very useful for young borrowers in that case. So I got curious about it and I kind of started reading about it myself. And uh, so uh, Prodigy has a very beautiful website where they talk about their history and how it works, all that. So I did read, did read some Wikipedia and some Prodigy um, homepage and also the one girl I mentioned, she mentioned that she already took the loan. So um, she told me she did some homework on it. So I was kind of relying on her as well. But then I decided to just go through all the online sources which are available because I didn't want um, any biased opinion. I wanted to find out myself because um, I don't know, at starting you would be skeptical about if there's a person you're speaking to who's um, 
set up a project you're like maybe or oh, maybe they just set up what's happening so you wouldn't be sure so i want to just read it uh, myself i did that it sounded pretty convincing and then i got in touch with uh, the prodigy um people through the customer care um email that, that's there and they're pretty responsive and um very uh, friendly and warm with their replies. So that was one starting factor. You at least know you're not entering somewhere or uh, a hostile zone where people don't even care what's happening to you. So uh, that was an assuring thing that people are talking well. I started off there. Uh, I had good background reading it about on the internet. And uh, so I was uh, most of the reviews I saw on the internet were about uh, students doing their MBA. So um, I wasn't sure if um, they were giving it for the masters in sciences too, but yeah, when I spoke to the individuals in Prodigy, I was assured about that. And also, I knew a few other people uh, from different universities like Kellogg, uh, where Prodigy was uh, offering to finance for MBA. So I knew that Prodigy was legit. I just wanted to make sure that it was a friendly experience and that I was sure with the first one week of interaction. Then I went about application. It was so smooth. <laughs> I can't praise it more. Um, just had to fill in a few details about um, my current job and uh, my um, scores uh, with the GRE and TOEFL and things like that um, and any other loans that I have currently. Uh, I did have a car loan <laughs> but uh, that did not really come in my way for uh, getting this finance with Prodigy. Uh, I did uh, that. I got my um, I got a reply in like less than 10 days, I guess. It was pretty smooth. And um, I also did um, apply, uh, I also did check with my university and I knew that the loans would be dispersed directly to USC, which I was very thankful about because I really hate paperwork and I would miss out the deadlines and stuff, you know, with all the things that you have to do in school, studying assignments, you don't want the headache of finances on your head and Prodigy makes that really easy. Um, you have the deadline set up and you don't even have to say what is your deadline. Prodigy knows it well because they have connections with uh, USC, so the loan is completely uh, taken care of without your involvement at all. You just have to read one one single document. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, so it, it has been a smooth process. Um, I would not deny there have been a few glitches, like, for example, once uh, I think the deadline was missed uh, because some communication gap and uh, but um, I wrote to USC about it saying okay hi uh, Prodigy takes care of my finances but looks like uh, they have missed out a deadline so would I have to pay the fine and uh, USC was like okay we have good connections with Prodigy don't worry about it at all just let us know once you get the loan and we will refund you the fine and they did as promised so it's a very hassle-free <laughs> process so, yeah that's how it was. That's great. That's a really nice synopsis, I think, of, of the Project Finance experience. I'm so glad uh, you've had a, had a really wonderful time uh, so far. Uh, so that, 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 you know, now that you're heading into the, to the final semester, um, it's, it's so great uh, that we've been able to, to help you out on this journey. So uh, thank you for, for sharing that experience. Um, I want to uh, go over quickly. I, I want to quickly get to our get to our questions. Certainly, um, I know some people have had some questions about uh, the application process specifically. So let's go um, into um, the, the the sort of uh, details here, and then we'll uh, we'll get to your questions. Um, if you have any questions about this bar bar process. Uh, slide or anything that Mario has said, please use the questions box as many of you have, and we'll get to them shortly. Um, so as Mario was was just referencing, uh, there's a fully online application that you'll uh, you'll join. Um, whereas you go to projectfinance.com, you'll fill out your application based on your particular school and program that you're attending. Um, once you go through this process, this application process, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fill out. Um, you'll tell us a little bit more about yourself. You'll then submit it. 
you'll submit that application. And now uh, we've actually um, improved our process so much that the majority of students actually get a provisional offer within a few seconds now. Um, so back when, when Mari was applying, um, it was actually much uh, much longer time frame, but now we've actually tightened things up so much um, that most students uh, find out within a few seconds, which is really um, a great achievement on our end, and we're excited to, to uh, give that benefit to you. Um, furthermore, once you get this provisional offer, which will tell you about your interest rate, your loan amount, your loan term, um, as well as your average monthly payments that, that you'll be making, uh, you can go ahead and accept that provisional offer and then go through our verification process, which is essentially uh, how we verify whatever you said in your application is correct. So a couple of documents that you would need to submit electronically would be a copy of your passport, a proof of residence so that you say, you, you know, you live where you say you live currently. Um, we'll ask for proof of scholarship or proof of savings if you'll be using that. Um, in your um, in, for your studies, and we will also ask for a copy of your credit report as well. Um, for those joining from India, um, that will be simply a civil report um, that you can get online. Um, you can actually request one for free, um, and they will email you a copy, and you can just upload that directly to our online platform. So once we verify your application, we'll fully approve your loan. Um, you'll then uh, get get the opportunity to sign the electronic version, uh, the, the, sorry, the electronic agreement uh, once you arrive on campus, and then we disperse the funds directly to the university. Um, once this disbursement process takes place, you obviously have your education period, you go through uh, your studies, you then have a grace period of six months after graduation, by which then you'll start uh, making monthly repayments on the loan. So you don't pay anything uh, during the entire study period plus that grace period of six months. Um, and then you start making those monthly repayments um, and as, uh, as mentioned here. And, and our, our loan terms, and I know some people have asked about interest rates and things like that, um, they're, they're between, uh, they're usually between six uh, to 6.65%. Uh, six to 7 .65, uh, um, and that is, uh, th that's the interest rate that we give. It is tied to U.S. LIBOR, um, which, is a, uh, which is a federal funds rate um, that all lenders use across, across the U.S. So if you have any specific questions about that, please send us a question or visit our website. We have a number of great articles and, and, and questions uh, and, and answers for, the, for those questions. Um, so going forward um, into our questions time. I know Nikhil has been going through um, some of the questions um, in terms of you know what you what you've been asking. So um, I I will give uh, the mic over to, to Nikhil, who's in our Cape Town office, um, to to uh, go through those questions and and then either me uh, himself or or Manu can can answer those questions for you. Thanks for that, Zach. Just confirming. Uh... Zach Madhu, can you hear me? I'm going to get started. Yep. All right, great. So we have a few questions that have come through from the audience. Some of them I will answer because they're specific to Prodigy Finance, and some I will direct to Madhu about her USC experience. So let's get started. The first question comes from Banu, and uh, Banu's question is, is the application asks for funding, which is basically money from a parent's account. Is that the same as a co-signer? So just to be clear, Prodigy Finance can fund up to 80% of your cost of attendance at a U.S. school for MS. Uh, so the remainder, uh, right, it could be 20% or, or a different amount, uh, would be savings. You know, this could come from your own account, from your parents, from friends and family. You can combine these, you know, these other sources of funds, right? Uh, that is not a co-signer. A co-signer is actually someone who signs along with you on the loan agreement and who is equally liable to repay that amount in case you are not able to repay it. Prodigy Finance never asks for a co-signer. You are the only signer on the loan. We also never ask for any collateral. There is no property or any other securitization required against the loan. This is purely a merit-based loan. I hope that answers your question, Banu. The next question is from Pooja asking about interest rates. So Pooja, just so you know, Prodigy Finance has a range of interest rates, fixed rate ranging from 5.5 to 8.5%. 
if you want to know the specific range that applies to you as an individual because we individually assess each person and also match you with the school you're going to you would have to go to us our loan page search for your school we have dedicated landing page for each school and you would get to know the range of rates applied offered at your school and then depending on your application we'll look at 50 plus parameters and uh, assess you as an individual your rate would range between 5.5 to 8.5 percent like i said that's a fixed rate uh, it floats on the U.S. LIBOR, which is currently at 1.7%. Uh, you can find out more on our website. And like I said, please look at a school-specific page, such as the USC page, to know exactly how that applies to you for your school. The next question is from Pooja again. So can we pay back in terms of dollars? So the way Prodigy Finance structures loans is, if you go to the U.S. to study, our loan would be in USD. You're borrowing in USD your interest accrues in USD, you are expected to repay the loan in USD as well. This is actually in your favor for two reasons. One, Zach has already mentioned that, uh, you know, disbursements are made directly to your school. You don't have to worry about missing out on a due date. Uh, the second thing, just as important, is that you don't have to worry about foreign exchange fluctuations. You are borrowing and repaying the loan in the same currency. And this is incidentally the same currency that a school tuition is in, it's USD. Next question. Is the loan process entirely online or do we have to approach someone in person? So again, it is a 100% online process right from the day that you apply for your loan, you get approved, only soft copy is required. The signature on the loan is electronic, it's an e-signature. Your repayments are also 100% online to the day that you actually repay back your loan. So the entire process from start to finish, which could be over years, is 100% online. So as such, you do not need to meet anyone in person. Yes, Prodigy Finance does has presence in New York, in London, in Cape Town, as well as in India. And uh, you will, from time to time, get the opportunity to attend some of our info sessions in different cities across the world. But please be aware that the entire process is still 100% online. Another question, and this is actually for you, Madhu. Uh, and I'm not sure if you've spoken about this, so let me know. But uh, Banu is curious to know about internship opportunities at USC. Have you already covered this? Uh, kind of when I said the career fairs, but yeah, uh, so internship opportunities are pretty good at USA. Uh, one thing is because it's in California, so there are uh, a lot of companies here and also in the Bay Area. So um, a lot of companies will be willing to interview with people around here. And also if it's an on-site, it works for the company easier to call you. So uh, internships are good, and we have a number of info sessions that come in, and um, not where they talk about the company. And we also have a few other sessions where actually uh, the product ambassadors for a particular product, like for example, recently we had the Microsoft uh, HoloLens uh, product ambassadors walk in, uh, where they told about how the product works. We got. Um, to just like wear it and play a game and stuff together and they also explain how to develop apps for it so at that time the recruiters also come in and you could always speak to them about what are the expectations uh, of um, an intern and you know kind of tailor your resume uh, in and around that uh, so yeah so we have a lot of companies coming for example again uh, uh, we had uh, Microsoft Lewis also with a linguistic library and uh, how you can develop apps using natural language processing. So many companies come in either as info session just to talk about their company or about their products and that's the best time you can talk to the recruiters and also the career fairs. A lot of companies come in, Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, there are a lot of them. So uh, yeah, USC is a good place uh, for applying for internships. Great, Madhu. And one last question, uh, USC specific. Uh, Banu is curious to know what the student teacher faculty ratio is at USC and uh, like, do you think that's important? Uh, so I don't know the exact uh, number, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, it's, um, you do have a class of about say 200, uh, 200 to 250 students um, with one professor. So you have these huge auditorium-like classes and uh, you listen to the professor on mic. Um, 
So if you want to talk uh, to the professor maybe in the class, it does get a little difficult, I'll be honest with that. Uh, so it's not a kind of environment where uh, you can just keep asking doubts or something uh, throughout the lecture, but rather we have uh, discussion sessions, uh, which are a smaller group of people and they're held throughout the week. So maybe you have about 20, 30 people in the class and uh, these discussion sessions are carried out by uh, teams or sometimes the professors uh, who answer your questions uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and also practice a few problems and codes and stuff. So yeah, that's about, uh, so in, in the lecture, yeah, it does get a little difficult. It is not really the kind of ratio you might have in some of the Indian universities, but it's, uh, you can kind of uh, work around it. And that's what I would say. Sure, thanks Madhu. I'll answer one last question from the audience, uh, and this is from Aviral. Uh, Aviral is curious to know how the provisional offer, or can it even be negotiated, because he's looking for reassessment to get up to 100% of the cost of attendance for STEM programs. So Aviral, just so you know, uh, the provisional offer is given to you, taken into consideration all the data that you have provided, as well as the com you know which school you're going to. So we look at over 50 parameters. So typically, the decision would be final, uh, at this point of time, if there is a reassessment of your application, Prodigy Finance will reach out to you themselves to let you know that it's happening, but there is no further action required at your end. And with that, I'm going to hand it back to Zach to uh, quickly wrap on this webinar, just keeping everyone's uh, time constraints in mind. Thank you so much, Nikhil. Um, that was that was great, Imadu, for your for your questions or for your answers. Uh, thank you, everyone uh, who who has joined so far uh, for your questions. These are great. Um, we will. Um, there there are a number of different ways uh, to get involved with us and to actually get further questions asked or to actually further help out um, your fellow classmates or or others. Um, and that one of those ways is. Um, to join uh, many of our WhatsApp groups. Um, some of you have uh, joined them already, uh, but you're, you're more than welcome to, to join them and ask questions there. Um, I'll have the kill. Uh, uh, he will be sharing the actual link uh, for uh, the entire list of, of WhatsApp uh, groups in the, uh, in the chat window. So um, you can certainly use that um, after this presentation. Um, furthermore, um, we have a couple of different programs, a growth hacker program and an ambassador program. Um, both of these um, is where you're able to join the Prodigy Finance community, uh, be further involved. Uh, Madhu is actually a Prodigy Finance ambassador, uh, which is fantastic. Uh, she's got one of our t-shirts there. You can get some off the flag. You can be a representative on campus. And you know, really uh, be the front lines to to answer any questions you might uh, other uh, students might have um, to help with events on campus, all that kind of stuff. You really get uh, to know what is the latest and greatest uh, things coming out of the Prodigy Finance community. So that's really exciting. Uh, so if you'd like to be um, an ambassador, maybe once you get to campus, or what we call a growth hacker, which is essentially an ambassador, but you're not on campus yet. Um, you want your either you want to spread the word maybe in your undergraduate institution or amongst your community um, of of uh, classmates that will be attending uh, next fall or next spring. Um, please let us know if you want to actually send us a chat right now, um, just to say hey, I'd love to be a growth hacker or I'd love to be an ambassador. We will get in touch with you um, as soon as possible to to set you up. Um, Furthermore, um, I know some students might, uh, might be interested in USC, um, but are considering other programs as well. Um, we, like I said, fund the top 100 uh, engineering universities by US News and World Report. If you do not see your MS program on the Prodigy Finance website, but it is within those rankings, it is in an engineering university within the top 100, please let us know. We, we, you can request your MS program to be added. Um, there are a couple of ways to do this. You can either uh, choose, you can choose one of the following. You can either send us an email at info at prodigyfinance.com 
or you can fill out a certain online survey, which Nikhil will post um, as well. Uh, you can take it uh, right now and request your MS program, and we'll get that up uh, as soon as possible. So we're really growing with you. So growing with student demand, trying to understand where students are looking to attend schools, and then we um, we we look to uh, to enable funding for those programs. So uh, thank you for for doing that. If you if you uh, have already done so. Uh, so um, lastly, just in terms of if you do have more questions uh, to get in touch with either Nikhil or uh, or me, um, you can do that at the following email addresses as well as we have a number of different. Uh, ways to get in touch with us. We now have live chat, which is very exciting on our application platform. So once you log in and register, you can live chat with, with a human based in our uh, in our Cape Town office, and they can work you, work you through the process um, of the application or repayments or anything like that, which is really exciting. Uh, like I said, you can join our WhatsApp groups. We also have events both on campus and in country. Um, so uh, Nikhil and his team uh, do a great job of hosting in-person info sessions in India and a number of other countries around the world. Um, please utilize uh, those events. It's a great way to build your community network and get to know everyone at the Project Finance community as well as uh, fellow classmates. Um, and then also, uh, please join us on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. Um, you can see what we're, what is the latest and greatest things that we're up to. We're constantly posting photos and videos from uh, campuses around the world. So it's a really exciting uh, time to be a part of the Project Finance community. Uh, so I wanted to just lastly um, share uh, two further polls just to get a pulse of how you thought uh, this uh, this experience went this webinar. Could you please let me know if this webinar was helpful for you or please be honest if it was not. If, you, if it was not helpful for you, um, please send us a note either in the questions box, the chat box, um, or send us an email. It's really important uh, that this programming is helpful for you in making your decision. So great, thank you for voting there. And one last uh, poll here is, I'd like to ask you, how likely are you now uh, to, plot, uh, to apply for financing with Prodigy Finance? Perhaps you already have, uh, or now that uh, you, you know inf more information about Prodigy Finance, you're more likely uh, to do so. So please let us know uh, about that. Um, it really helps us uh, figure out you know, how effective these webinars are about giving you all the information that you need. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. And I'll just share those results quickly. Very good. I'm so glad that, that many of you are very likely to, to apply, that many of you already have. Um, if you are in that maybe uh, column, please reach out to us. Um, to ask your specific questions. You may have specific questions that maybe you're on the fence about, maybe you don't quite understand um, something about uh, how we work or, or the options that are available to you. Please reach out to us at info at prodigyfinance.com or on a WhatsApp group. Uh, me, Nikhil, and our teams will more than uh, be happy uh, to help you out with any of your questions. Uh, so, um, with that, I want to thank Magu, everyone, please uh, uh, thank her for, for waking up early and giving her her amazing perspective about her experience with Prodigy and also being on campus at USD. So, thank you so much for joining us, Magu. Thank you, Nicole. It's my pleasure. All right. Well, uh, we're uh, about out of time now, so I'm going to end the webinar. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and please send us your questions afterwards. Um, as they come up. So once again, signing off from New York. Um, have a wonderful rest of your evening and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Bye guys. Good luck. Um, Nikhil, are you still there?
Yeah, I'm still here. I'll just uh, thanks so much, but <laughs> I think it's just us. I'm not sure. Zach, are you still there? I think he left. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, thanks, Madhu. I'm actually traveling myself. I'm at a Cape Town office. Yeah, sure. Uh, visiting again this year. I think you would have graduated by then. Oh, yeah, I would be graduating this May, May 2018. So, okay. this is my last hey, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, so that's me. Great seeing you again. <laughs> And thanks so much for this. I think we've gone back and forth quite a bit, and I know it's been super early morning for you. And I think I really think like people benefited a lot from your. This is like you know coming from the horses now. Uh, I, I hope so. Uh, how, just keep people, people here from, from you know, the seminar today. Yeah, yeah. Just keep it up. Uh, I think it was over thirty. Was <laughs> 30, 31, I think is the total. That's a big number. Um, I was surprised there were very less questions because last time we had the webinar, we had so many questions and even the time was not enough to take care of the questions. So it's like yeah. people are more informed this time, I guess. No, no, also the way we structure it, so we put in the questions during sign up. You know, so the mm -hmm. same questions are the same. Those that come early during sign up. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, oh, no, sure. Madhu, I think to end this right now because uh, I think there are other people trying to get into this uh, this login. Sure, yeah. All right, it was nice seeing uh, you. Yeah, great chatting with you again. Yeah, have a good day. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye.